So it's a pretty amazing company that, and it's, I think, continuing to do, uh, going to do well even in the future. Uh, Christmas last year, I have two kids, a daughter who's, uh, I'm going to get the age wrong and she's going to kill me, 11 and my son is 14. My daughter is a huge Harry Potter fan. So her Christmas list included the Hermione wand, the goggle and the glasses, the cape, and a poster, nine and three, three quarters, which is the platform between nine and 10, which is how you get into Hogwarts. You learn these things when you have kids. <laughs> and I wanted to be, and my kids have only two ranking. You're either the greatest dad if you fulfill their wishes, or you're the worst dad in the world if you don't. Three days before Christmas, I am on Amazon.com because I think everything in the world can be purchased on Amazon. I click through most of her list, finish it up. I come to the poster, it's not available. Mild panic attack, but I said, no, no worries. Do a Google search. I find a store in the UK that's going to sell it for me. I click on it, make the per enter my credit card number, buy it, it shows up at my door. I'm the greatest dad in the world. Yeah, that works for me every time. But what I had not or what I failed to appreciate at that point is that I had complica uh, completed a very complicated transaction. Sitting on my couch in Salt Lake City, I bought a poster from a store in the UK without worrying about, hey, what was the price, what's the dollar, uh, pound dollar conversion, is the store open? None of those things mattered. All that mattered was I needed to get it from my daughter so I don't stand, get to the bottom of the list. I, I come up as super dad and I achieved it by clicking on, uh, on a link. And the company that facilitates that is Wirecard. Wirecard is a, a software and infrastructure provider. So every time you get on the internet and you want to buy goods and services, there's somebody like this in the back making sure that it all happens. We don't even think twice about it. We, we, when we click, we want things to happen. It has to be seamless. But it's, it's companies like Wirecard that basically uh, enable that. These are slides that talk about the opportunity for Wirecard. You know, you can see that the global e-payment uh, transactions are growing pretty fast. The other stat that is not obvious uh, through these slides is that the next leg of growth for them is coming in Asia. They have uh, made acquisitions in Singapore, in Thailand, uh, in, in Indonesia, and they are the only non-Chinese company to get permission to be listed as an acquirer in China. So they are the only non-Chinese company that can act, acquire customers in China. That is a huge opportunity, and that's going to be where you're going to see the next leg of growth. So we've talked about uh, the themes that, uh, here of, of consumption and, and uh, uh, you know, whether it be luxury goods or you know, some, uh, the Internet, which is, is, uh, is basically a big driver of change. You know, we talk about the pace of change, and the reason I think the change happens so fast is because of the, the Internet. That's one of the reasons. But if you go around the world, there are still some countries where the, the basic services are missing. Would it shock you if I told you that 70 million of people in Brazil, of a population of 190 million, do not have a bank account? Would it shock you if I said 40% of the population in India have never used financial services? Now think about that number for a second. 40% of 1.2 billion, that is almost 500 million people, they don't know what a bank is. If you, the, the uh, World Economic Forum did a study late last year, actually it was McKinsey who did it for them, I think, but they're taking credit for it. But one of the areas of growth that they see going forward is financial services. Because once people get beyond the subsistence uh, level, i.e. I, I can get two square meals, three square meals a day or whatever, then they have a little bit extra money, they will buy goods and services and they want to save some money as well. That's when they start accessing financial services. So we think there's tremendous opportunity in the whole uh, financial services arena. You and I don't think twice about going out and uh, accessing a bank uh, network anywhere. But if you look at countries around the world, you know, you'd be stunned at, the, at how hard it is to find a bank. And when you find a bank, sometimes it doesn't even work uh, because there's security issues. We had a team just come in from uh, uh, Africa last week and they were in Maybe I can mention the countries, uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia. And they said, you'd be surprised at how scary some of these places are. I mean, it just is, it seems like it's from Mad Max. <laughs> but uh, that's, the, that's the ground reality. But there is a tremendous opportunity for companies who are willing to exploit that. I'll give you another story. I was in India last year, uh, fall of last year, 
again, doing the usual thing, visiting companies. I had a transaction with one of the brokers who was helping us, uh, helping manage the trip. Uh, turned out I owed him some money. I said, okay, why don't you point me to an ATM and then I'll go withdraw the cash. And he looks at me like I had two heads. <laughs> and I said, that's not a stupid question. You know, you show me an ATM, I'll withdraw the cash and I'll give it to you. He said, but you have a phone. Why don't you use that? So then I'm looking at him like he has two heads. <laughs> but turns out in, in India, some of these banks have a service where I can generate a PIN on the fly. If I owe you money, I generate a PIN, I send it to your phone. You can take that PIN, go to any ATM and withdraw the cash at your leisure. So we've completed a cashless transaction. So while it's, they're accessing basic financial services, they're accessing it in a very innovative fashion. And that's what we look for. We want to find companies that are interesting, that are doing, solving problems, but doing it in an innovative fashion, in innovative and interesting. Because we think that's a sustainable competitive advantage for companies. So with that backdrop, one of the names that we invest in is Indusind Bank, and they're one of the companies that provides that service. They're one of uh, the premier banks in India. Small bank, you know, only 400 branches, and, uh, but growing really fast, extremely focused on the risk aspect of the business. You know, we've met with the management teams uh, several times, and they want to focus on the quality of the loans they lend. Anybody can lend money. I could stand on the street corner and rack up a tremendous amount of growth. The question is, can I collect? So it's interesting that people lose sight of that. They, they think growth of, uh, you know, of your loan portfolio is what is important. No, it's, you know, can you collect it at the end of the day? And, and they are very focused on that. And so we're, we're quite pleased to have this company in our portfolio. And we think there's tremendous uh, headroom left too. You know, I mean, we were also shareholders of another bank uh, in India many years ago. And we think this is of the same pedigree. Now, I've thrown out a number of um, examples of companies that we've invested in. Hopefully, it gives you a flavor for the kind of work we do. We're out there on the road. We're assessing management teams. We're trying to uh, check the business models. One of the comments I often hear when we do presentations for consultants or potential clients is that international investing has got to be uh, risky. You know, you're finding, you're finding investments in Zimbabwe, South Africa, India, Pakistan, these places are going to blow up. I mean, it's got to be a riskier market. Well, the empirical evidence goes against that. If you look at this chart really quickly, what it tells you is that if you invested in the frontier markets, that was point, has a beta of 0.56, which means it's about half as risky or volatile as the S&P 500. Not something that is intuitive to me. If I did not know anything and 20 years ago, if you'd asked me this question, I said, no, no way, it's not possible. But the reality is that it is less riskier than the S&P 500. The same with the emerging market small cap. So you can, my point is that you can invest in these international markets and you don't have to assume that you're taking on higher risk. This, this to me is, is a, a revelation. Uh, most people would, if you sight unseen, even finance professionals, if you ask them, most of them would say, no, I think it's going to be riskier. At least as risky as the US market, if not riskier. And the evidence is quite to the contrary. So I think that's, uh, what we try and exploit when we create a portfolio uh, is we try and invest in these different countries. And, and then you think about it and say, why is, that, why is that possible? Well, if you think about a consumer in China and a consumer in Indonesia or in India or Turkey or Brazil, well, their behavior is very dif different and independent of what happens in each country. Now, if you own global cyclicals, they will all move in sync. Yes, if you own a coal company, or if you buy Foxconn, which manufactures iPads, which are sold to the developed world, yeah, those are companies that are going to be correlated. But if you find small, interesting companies like a Coca-Cola Isichek, or a Wirecard, or a Ferragamo, that has unique trends and uh, that benefit them, then they will move independent of each other. And that's what we try to do. And that's why I think you can build a portfolio with really low correlation. With that, I'm almost at the end of this. I see people dozing off, but hang with me here. I told you, if you just needed a few more drinks and you'd be <laughs> laughing by now. But this is a quick blurb on who we are. I, I've hit some of the points earlier. You know, we are a bottom-up manager in the sense that we don't rely on the street. We do our own research. We're based in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, most people in the international world don't even know where Utah is. And they, you couldn't, they couldn't find it on a map if you handed it to them. But I think that affords us a certain unique uh, advantages. Because we don't have to listen to the noise, we don't have to be in the flow of the, the investment banks who are 
pitching ideas, we have to generate our own ideas, which is where our quantitative engine comes in, which is where our due diligence comes in. So we do the analysis up front, we go out and see the companies, we assess the management teams, and uh, hopefully put together a portfolio that works for all of you. With that, I'll hand it over to Mark. And